Python in Excel has been available for several months now. As a data analyst, I was excited to see what it was capable of. Now, if you're not familiar with Python or some of the libraries like Matplotlib, Pandas, Seaborn, there are plenty of resources online to familiarize yourself with the code and syntax. But whether you're an avid user or not, it's an exciting new feature to experiment with. In order to use Python and activate it within Microsoft Excel, you have to be a Microsoft 365 Insider, which means you need a Microsoft 365 subscription and you need to opt into the Insiders program. If you haven't yet, I recommend that you do. It makes cool features like this available to you right away. So if you're ready to see what everyone's talking about, let's get into it. Here we have a sample data set that we're gonna to use to experiment with Python within Excel. Nothing too complicated. We have some sales numbers from 2015 through 2017, different categories and products, the total amount sold, and their rating of each product. Now, as long as you're connected to the Microsoft Cloud, you can use Python if you've signed up for the program. And there are two ways you can begin your Python programming. You could just select a blank cell, go up to our Formulas tab, and you'll see this Python preview section here what you can do is select insert Python and then Python in Excel. And you see the PY for the Python code and you can begin typing in whatever scripts you want. The other way to do this, instead of using the insert Python dropdown, we can begin with a formula, which is simply equals PY, hit tab, and you're back in the shell. Now, if you're familiar with Python, the syntax you'll use will all be the same that you're comfortable with. There are some subtle differences on how you're gonna view this within Excel, but we'll get to all that shortly. So the first thing I wanna do is take my table to the left and create a data frame out of it. And to do that, I can simply highlight my area, control shift down to select it all. And you can see the Python code has automatically generated in the formula bar. Now, if I hit enter, nothing's gonna happen because all that does is go to the next line in the Python kernel. That way you could add further code to customize your output, create a chart. To actually execute the code, we wanna hit Control Enter. I scroll back up, we can see here we have a data frame. Now, if I actually wanna view the data within the data frame, I can go right here to the left of the formula bar. We have a Python object. If I drop down, select Excel value, it'll show me exactly what the data frame looks like. Let me go ahead and close that back up, select Python object. And the first thing I'll do is I'll assign the data frame a name, which will just make it easier to work with in the future examples. So I don't have to pull this back in, but I can go back up in front of the code and I'll do DF equals. And DF will be the name of our data frame. Again, hit Control Enter to execute the code. And it doesn't appear that anything happened, but if I go to another cell, Again, equals PY, tab, select data frame, and you can see that it's recognizing the data frame name that we assigned. Now, instead of just pulling the data frame, I wanna look at the detail behind it. So if I do data frame dot info with parentheses, hit control enter, and you'll see it'll say none. But if I go back up to the ribbon and I select diagnostics, you see here that I get a quick breakdown of the sample data. I have all the various fields showing 75 non-null values and we have our data type. Now for the most part, this looks okay, but the one I wanna change here is the year. The year is listed as an integer. We actually wanna change that to a date time format. You certainly don't have to, but that's gonna drive the data analyst in me crazy. So let me close this diagnostics out. I'll go back into my data frame info and to change the data type within Excel, I'll reference the data frame column I want to change and then we'll set it to a year value. Do that, we do PD dot to date time, open parentheses. Again, we're going to reference our data frame and column and our format. We're going to use that capital Y to indicate a year. Then we'll press control enter, it says none. Now, if we go to another cell, again, do our df.info, execute it. And under diagnostics, you can see here that our year column has been changed to a date time value. Perfect. Now, let's say we want to filter down on our data set. Normally in Excel, you could apply some filters and filter it however you like. You could use an equation. But in Python, there are several methods to filter down on a data set or a data frame in this example. 
But for now, let's go ahead and filter down the data frame for any rating that is below 50%. So I'll go ahead, I'll overwrite this data.info. Instead, we'll use our open brackets. Begin the filter, select an open parentheses. We wanna filter on the rating field that's less than 50%. Close out our brackets, control enter. Again, it's showing as a data frame. If we go ahead and open this up, select Excel value, and now you can see here in the rating column, there's nothing above 50%. Now we can take this a step further and actually run some aggregations on this. Let's say we wanna take our filtered data frame and just pull out the minimum values of sales grouped by year. Now to do that, we could keep this same code and at the end of it, we'll add a group by function. We'll group on our year for our aggregation. We want the minimum values. Press control enter. And you can see here, 2015, the minimum sales was 300, followed by 400, followed by 600 for 2017. Now let's experiment with group by a little bit more. Grouping by one of the fields allows us to run an aggregation just on that particular category or product. So it's kind of like using subtotal. If we had filtered normally in Excel on say the category of clothing and you ran an average function within the subtotal, you would see a certain result versus running an average on another category or the whole data set. Group by is basically helping us perform the same functionality. So how about we use group by again and this time, instead of the minimum sales values, we'll take the sum of the sales. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this all out. And we'll begin anew with our data frame. I'm gonna use these brackets because I wanna group by year, comma. The second group, I want it to be category. Now we can call our aggregation. Start with my bracket, identify the sales. I choose sum for my aggregation. And now I'm gonna sort the values. And I wanna sort the sum of sales in descending order. To do that with Python, we just select ascending, set it to false. Again, control enter. And now you can see our values are listed in descending order. We've got our various years and categories. Now say we didn't wanna make year a part of it. We just wanted to run the aggregation on the category by itself without factoring in the year. It's just easy enough. We just have to adjust this a little bit. We get rid of the brackets and the group by, get rid of the year. And you know what, now that I'm thinking about it, instead of sum, let's look at the average. In Python, the average is the mean. We've got our sort values, ascending equals false. Let's run that. Now our four categories have been grouped together to give us the average sales numbers. You know what, let's take one step further. We do have three decimal places here. We can add a round function. I'll just select one decimal place. Control enter, there we go. So there's a lot you can do with aggregations, uh, various calculations, filtering to work with your data set using Python and Excel. But you can also take it a step further and create charts. Now, if I go back up to my Python section in the ribbon and I open this initialization, you can see here that when Python is connected to the cloud, there are various libraries that are automatically imported. Normally in Python, I may have to actually import these on my own separately. We've got NumPy, we've got Pandas, Matplotlib, and Seaborn, and it gives you the aliases, which are pretty standard. So let's experiment with Seaborn, which is great for visualization and data analysis. Go ahead and close this out. First thing I wanna do is I wanna take this average of the categories and assign it a variable. So let's go to the front and we'll say category average equals, we'll enter. Now, if I come down to another cell, again, we'll do equals PY tab. We'll take our category averages, enter dot plot. We'll set our X axis to equal category. Our Y axis will be our sales. And for the type of chart, which is represented by kind, let's use a bar chart. Control enter. Now, the one problem with this is that running these visuals, whether it's Seaborn, whether it's through Matplotlib or what have you, they only exist in that single cell. So what I'll do is I'll change this to an Excel value. You can see that tiny little bar in there. If I go ahead, select a larger field, and we'll do merge and center. And now you get a better look at our visualization. 
Now let's actually use Seaborn to customize an output. But this time I'm not gonna use the category average. I'm gonna take the whole data frame and I wanna set up a line chart to show the category sales by year. We get rid of this and instead we'll call Seaborn alias is SNS, call in a line plot and we'll make our X axis equal to year. Our Y axis equals to sales. We'll set the hue as our category. And if you're not familiar with hue, you'll see what that does in just a second. And we'll choose our data, which is DF. Close that out, control enter, and there you go. So our hue category gives each of our categories a different line color. So you can see as time goes on on the axis here, it's like the accessory sales had better productivity overall. Now there's more we could do with this. We could use different plots. We could add some more formatting. I won't get too into depth now, but I do not like this axis here. It's just too jumbled. So if we go back in, I'll hit enter, take it down another line within the formula bar. I wanna format those axis ticks. And that is done with plt.xticks. We'll open our parentheses, use the brackets for our list. Set our first value is 2015. And our last value is 2017. Close it out, control enter. That looks much, much cleaner. Now, hopefully I didn't go over anyone's head with this. There's a lot to learn in Python. You can't learn it overnight. If you're familiar with it, then using it in Excel won't be anything too complicated. But if you haven't tried Python yet, why not? If you've been using this feature for a while now, let me know in the comments what sort of cool stuff you've done with it. I usually work right in Jupyter Notebook, but the fact that it's available in Excel is pretty exciting. Till next time, data people.